Welcome back. Chewithin Farm in Waitara has been in fall family ownership for many generations. In 2012, having entered the Dairy Business of the Year competition for the first time, the enterprise won the Taranaki Region Award for the best farm. It's grown from a small family farm of 100 acres to a farm with land including three runoffs of just over 900 acres. And I think 20 years ago when my father took it over, he, he sort of had a vision of turning it into a business rather than a lifestyle, I guess. And he very closely project managed the what we call the super shed, which was a huge investment. It's 60 bale Dairy Master Rotary. And I think what he saw there is he really needed to get an investment that big to really support the business going forward. So now we've got a huge amount of capacity to grow the cow numbers as we add on new land parcels to the current milking platform. Around twice. We're really knuckling down and looking at the numbers now. Although, on the other hand, we're still in the phase of building a business. So I guess we're chasing economies of scale, chasing production, and as cash flow allows and our friendly bankers BNZ allow, we sort of put in new things to try and get economies of scale, like, for example, the fourth maize bunker we've just concreted to try and get more maize into the feed system. Farming can be quite tough. It's incredibly capital intensive. And, you know, there are three key things that you can't control, and that's payout, the weather, and feed costs. And, um, you know, to a certain extent, you're at the mercy of, of the fluctuations, but you've just got to do the best with what you can control. We're milking on about 270 hectares, and we've got approximately 80 hectares of runoff nearby, all within cow walking distance. This season, 1150. That's been a fairly rapid climb over the last few years with inclusions of different blocks. When I came onto the farm in 2004, uh, it, was, it was a change of policy from seasonal to year-round milking. And we started with a herd of 150 to 200 cows that became the nucleus of the winter milking herd. We've got 300 dedicated carvers this autumn. Upsides of milking year-round is that we can dry off to calving date, I think, and that's a big help with lactation length for the, the whole herd. The stocking rate's about four and a half cows per hectare or so and consequently we're feeding more than a third of their diet in supplement and often more than half. We generally these days get about 450 solids a cow made up mostly with the long lactation. We generally achieve about close to a 300 day uh, lactation length for each cow on average. When we put the shed up, we decided on a Dairy Master milking plant. It's a full European spec shed, and at the time it was the first of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere, for Dairy Master that is. It has the capacity to ID the cows, of course, and to feed them even to production, which is something that's not done a lot here but is common in Europe and America. It has a lot of good features. Around twice. Voice announcements that you can attach to any cow, such as beware, she kicks, that sort of thing. Milk meters, electronic tags, that was well before Nate as well, I might add, and um, it weighs the milk from every cow and records that on the program so that I've got a history of that cow I can check from when she started in here. It means that I don't have to rely on herd tests for a lot of the data. The cluster cleanse was an upgrade that we got nearly a year ago now. It's designed to flush the cups out after milking each cow. It's a pretty quick routine, only takes about 10 seconds. It's really done everything that we could hope and it has helped lower infection rate through the season I suppose because the cups are always clean when they go on and that's one of the challenges that we weren't able to cope with beforehand. 
When we converted this old cow shed into a calf rearing facility, we wanted to put automatic calf feeders in, in the hope that it would free labour up some, uh, which I believe it has done. It's perhaps not freed it up quite as much as I'd hoped, but it's allowed a flexibility that you don't have when you are tied to manually feeding calves. These calves here are only four days old and they are on automatic feeders. St. Oran School from Wellington, this is their third trip to this farm. They come to Taranaki once a year and go to different farms for a week. They've put this actually in their curriculum now, this dairy part, so that's good. They come here to see a up-to-date flash milking shed and then they compare this shed to a herringbone or to a smaller one. So you girls can have a hand at bottle feeding. Yeah. We have five full-time men. One of those five full-time men is a maintenance person. He's paid 50% by the Fall family and 50% by us. We have five relief milkers. The reason why we employ so many relief milkers is because most of the relief milkers have a nine to five job in town. And so they come here at 4.30 in the morning and then they go to their nine to five job. By having so many relief milkers, uh, if somebody gets sick or has to go away, it's just much easier. We've used consultants to design and upgrade the system as the farm's grown. We've still got to build a large storage pond to cater for continued storm events. But uh, we've got a feed pad now that catches a lot of rainwater too. At rainy times, we will scrape it into this ditch behind me. And from there, the flood wash from the cow shed yard washes it into the ponds. And it gets stirred with a submersed horizontal stirrer and gets pumped through an upgraded pump system, including a macerating pump, and gets irrigated out into the paddock. We've uh, upped it to just over 100 hectares now out of 270. So that keeps us within guidelines on the nutrient plan with uh, mainly K distribution. We certainly can fine tune the business some more. We've been through a period of rapid growth and it'll be good to focus back on things that will really help production again rather than growth and getting uh, new blocks organised and cow numbers up and just improving the herd with culling as it should be uh, and just getting the farm managed uh, in detail up to standard. So I think that there's a, probably 5-10% that could be gained there really.